Hi, in this session I'll cover how to create a reverse pivot table. Now what do we mean by that? Basically, when we first start out creating a pivot table, we usually have something like this and we want to turn it into something like this. Now the difference between these two is that with this table, this looks more like something that we'd get out of a, a database. Basically, our first row is our uh, header fields, our headers, and they kind of are descriptive on what the uh, rows at the bottom, the values for each of the rows, the row cells here at the bottom are. They're not really doing double duty. They're they're just describing uh, what these cells are. With this table, look here, and we we'll see that our column fields they're actually doing double duty. They not only can they be something that is a header field, but they can also be something akin to a value. So we really don't want to have this as a uh, table uh, if we want to do some further analysis. This really this format works out a lot better if we want to do any other further analysis. So how do we turn this into this? Well, that's going to be using the pivot table. And with the pivot table in Excel 2007, we actually have to use a wizard that was there in um, 2003. But that's not really accessible in 2007. The, the, um, the selection in the ribbon doesn't have it. So what we need to do is use the keyboard shortcut. And that's going to be the Alt key, D for data, P for pivot. And that's going to bring up our wizard. We want to select the multiple consolidation ranges. Click Next. And then we want to create the page fields. Go ahead and select that and click Next. Now we're going to select our range, which is this table here. And we're going to add it to the all ranges. Uh, keep this at zero. We, don't, we'll, we, don't, we want zero page fields. Click Next. And it's going to ask us now where do we want to create it. Let's just create a new worksheet here. And let me increase this a little bit. Now, look, looking at this table and going back to sheet one here, you'll see that really it doesn't look any different. We've got our items, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And that's what it shows here. But we just have our grand totals for the column and for the rows. Well, what we want to do is we want to double click the grand total here at the end. And that's going to bring up a new sheet here. Let me increase this. And this table is really the, the one that we want. We have our uh, first row, which is our column fields. And that is something where it's very generic. It can represent our uh, records here. So what we can do is then we can call this item. In this case, period and quantity. Oops. Quant. Now if I can spell quantity, that'd work. Quantity. So you can see here, let me go and copy this and bring it back over here. And I'll just copy that. Control C to copy. And then I'll just do, uh, I'll just paste it as values. So we don't bring any of that formatting over. As you can see here, it's the same. So that's how we can take a table that we get like this where the values the columns represent are doing double duty representing not only a descript not only describing the records but also uh, also a, a value turned it into a real data set here so hope that helps thanks for watching